the best buildings come from a collaboration. They come from people coming together from many different disciplines. I was fortunate enough uh, many years ago when I graduated from university to work for a small practice in London that was led by an engineer called Tim McFarlane. He was very much um, one of the early pioneers in trying to find ways in which glass might be used as a structure. So up until that point, glass had certainly been around, it participated in the building envelope in increasingly larger sizes, but it never really been used to be the element that was carrying the load, the primary structure. It had always been the secondary or tertiary structure in itself. So he was fundamentally interested in saying, okay, how do I replace, in very simple terms, columns and beams with glass? And that's when it captured my imagination. There's a number of courses, the master's courses in facades, uh, in structural glass design, that I'm helping to guide and to also to critique on that. So I'm helping provide some pragmatic guidance about what's possible, how it might be done, where to look, where, where research to look at, what precedent examples of buildings to look at, that where they can get inspiration from. The best buildings come from a collaboration. They come from people coming together from many different disciplines and that collaboration between the other creatives in that team and the engineer is vital to its success. Ultimately, anything that's designed, whether it's a building, a product, a piece of furniture, is subject to an element of engineering. It's really a question about how that engineering and the science of that engineering is applied to the development of that design and at what point. It's really important from an engineering standpoint that the collaboration is seen at the very beginning, so that these things emerge together. And I think advice as a student is, you know, remain as broad as you can, because I think that the more you understand from different aspects of your particular area of interest, the better. So, you know, you might be a great design architect, but it's really important that you understand the elements of engineering, the elements of the technical elements going to your building. Not, not to a great depth, but to, an, to a level that you understand what inputs into, into it. So that it not only informs your design process, but also means that when you're out in the real world and you're in a collaborative environment, that you can actually collaborate. You're, you, you understand and can have an intelligent dialogue with those that you're um, seeking to get specialist advice from, such as engineers and landscape designers or whatever it is you need you have some particularly as an architect I think you you know you are the you are the sort of hub of all of those disciplines um, and it is your job to be able to manipulate that information in a way that makes your design best pragmatism is a very important thing but don't let it get too much in the way when you're in a student and as you graduate start to be a lot more pragmatic than you were when you were a student <laughs> and um, and you know those, those are sort of keys, I think, to, to, to success. But of course, creativity and flair is, is is vital as a student to be able to express. And I think what's been great about Delft and my experience of it so far is that that creativity is allowed to flourish, and is gently guided in certain ways, but is not in any way forced. And I think that that's what's really exciting about the work that I've been seeing with the, the students I've been working with. Mm -hmm.